on March the 4th at 8 o'clock for the next uh, Good Morning Portugal Wine Club. Right, let's give him... i tell you what, we'll bring him on after our intro because um, we have an intro, uh, me and Colin, ex-racing driver from the United Kingdom, from His Majesty's United Kingdom, <laughs> and all-round good egg. I don't know if you've seen... It's, it's, it's the um, dad joke equivalent of a sex tape. He's got a tape going round of his most recent European performance on his European tour. Um, and the crowd were a little bit difficult, but it didn't stop him. He kept going. He's a professional, as you'll find out in just a moment um, after our new intro into this new feature. Go more. <laughs> I keep saying go motoring. That's the building feature. Go motoring, Portugal. Here we go. Now, I do like the horn on the end of that. Who doesn't like a horn first thing in the morning, eh, Colin? Good morning to you. Uh, bon dia. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. You hear me okay? Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Good. Good, good. Yes. good. Don't tell him your name, Pike. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm wonderful, thank you. Excellent. I I was hoping so. Look at you with your Good Morning Portugal mug as well. Yes. Um, and we of had course. a lot of fun, didn't we, reviewing our first vehicle, and we'll say more about it uh, this morning. But I think a little bit of the backstory to this, um, we we have been having talks, haven't we? Or our people have been speaking to each other. My people were speaking to your people and vice versa and thought it might be a good idea to have a motoring inspection or feature on the Good Morning Portugal show. We've made it happen. What were your original thoughts? Why did you want to make this happen, Colin? Well, I thought it's, it's a different car market in Portugal compared with, uh, I suppose, most of your clients are from... Uh, the United States, where choice is uh, wonderful because it's the largest car market in the world. So um, uh, that that actual fact is um, slowly being caught by the Chinese market, unfortunately. But oh yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, but in America, you have big, wide, open roads with a sixty-five mile an hour speed limit, and your cars are extensively very wide, very comfortable, absolute rubbish of going around corners. Um, <laughs> the controversy has started, yeah. But there are but they many, don't have but they don't have many corners, so it, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they've got so, all the songs. they've got all the best motoring songs, haven't they? Right yeah, so they automobile, <laughs> oh, and then you're burning at the corner of my yeah. they got all the songs, they've got the yeah. culture, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So when they come to Portugal, uh those sort of vehicles are basically too wide for the roads. Yeah. They whilst they're comfortable, they uh, aren't very good at going around our tight little bends. So they need advice on what to buy in this country. And it's a much different market because there are cars in America that you will never see in, in Europe. Um, therefore, they're not aware of it. So I thought we, we have a duty to help people um, know what the, the Portuguese market gives. And to do that, it would have been nice for us to have manufacturers falling all over us to try their cars and promote them. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, the only kind one so far are Cateno in uh, in Caldas, That's who are, yes. you know, Toyota dealers. Uh, but the group is the actual Toyota um, importer for the whole yeah. of Portugal. Yeah. Okay. And for transparency, so that's where you're, you're a big fan of Toyota. You're, you're a Toyota owner, aren't you? I am. Yes. Yes. Okay. I yeah. Uh, I have to uh, admit that I put my hard-earned cash into a Toyota. Yeah, and very nice it is too because we've got some footage of uh, being in in your uh, Yaris. Your your yeah, is it a Yaris GT? Yar Yaris. It's a, it's a souped up. Um, it's a G G R Yaris, yeah, which Yaris. means that it's it's a limited edition. It's a rally car for the road. 
And it does actually go grrr as well, doesn't it? Um, on, on Unfortunately, the... yes, it does, but it's uh, it's piped in sound through the speakers. That's really quite disappointing in a way, isn't it? But um, it it is. Most people say they dislike it, but you know. Well, I wouldn't have it, known unless you told me that. I wouldn't have known. And I'm I'm thinking. Well, there you go. If you're going to go to the trouble of recording MP3s to play when you put your foot down, you might want the sound <laughs> yeah. of a dragon in the background, or I don't know. You could have other sounds, couldn't you? And people might like to yeah. suggest those, or flight of the Valkyries, or something like that. Can you change? Can you change the MP3 on demand? Or is it's a factory setting? Is it factory setting? And you, apparently, you can't even switch it off. And but there are people on forums that uh, have bought these cars. Yeah. That are spending thousands upon thousands of pounds and or euros on uh, special exhaust to make it sound nice for the people outside, but it still gets the that sound on the inside. So I, I just don't understand how people can spend that sort of money. Oh, that's interesting. So Toyota designed that so that the driver would experience that sound more than yeah. the. Uh, yeah. That's very. That's very. You... Consider it, isn't it? Well, yeah, because if you listen to the car from the outside, it sounds like an ordinary shopping uh, trolley car. Does it? Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, mm. well, certainly better mm. than I, I don't know about you, Colin. And we're going to be going to the electric vehicle show, aren't we, in May in Lisbon and having some we are. fun. But I'm we are. not. I, again, electric vehicles could have any sound, and instead of sounding kind of manly and amazing yeah. and beefy. They sound like Darth Vader's mother-in-law whining down the street. Yeah. Don't they? What is that about? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's like somebody hoovering, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's or ridiculous. Or a, you know, you, yeah. like, it's, yeah. it's not. It's not. A, it's not an impressive sound. And in fact, it's quite a. I find it quite an unnerving sound as well. That sort of, you know, like there's a um, RoboCop is breathing down your neck kind of sound. Mm. So I think electric vehicles, and, and they can probably change it actually, to be fair, but I, uh, most of them yeah. seem to make that, that similar sort of sound there. Okay, so there we are. We've, we, um, we did imagine that um, uh, motor manufacturers, distributors might be falling over themselves to help us uh, fit out and, and, and um, assist foreigners buying cars. That hasn't happened as yet, apart from uh, one marvellous chap who we know, and the most difficult thing about working with uh, this man um, is pronouncing his name. Everything apart from that has been absolutely wonderful, <laughs> working with the, the legend and man mountain, who is Rui Iha. Can you say that, Colin? I certainly can say Rui. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good effort. You're not going to get a muita bain from me for that, or for the bigger, I don't suppose. But that is Rui Iha, um, or Big Iha. Roy as uh, Colin would, might call it, yeah. uh, standing in the showroom from where we were able to borrow um, a RAV4 hybrid just recently. And I've got some lovely photos um, of said vehicle, which I think we really enjoyed. Oh, look, uh, Coach Turner was it, was it <laughs> looking forward to... It would only be me singing Fleetwood Mac. Ding, 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 if you want a, a Jack Black School of Rock kind of thing, we can do that as we play out. Oh, look, then hear more songs coming in. Uh, she's real fire and she's my 409. What is that, a Peugeot? Um, that's, it's, not, it's not the uh, most sexy name for a car, a 409, is it? And I've yet to see a Hummer here in Portugal. That's not going to go down yeah. any country well, late, is it? That's part of the problem you were talking about before. But here is the yeah. beauty um, that we were able to uh, borrow. Now, um, here's a nice selection of pictures. We were a little bit disappointed that day, Colin, of course, because we thought we'd have a sunny day. We thought we'd do some yep. GoPro-style footage, but it was peeing down, basically. So we got some moody shots of the RAV4 on the San Martino de Porto Quay. Um, the review is we decided we would take to the paper instead. So the Portugal resident column today of mine is a review of this car. And here are a few pictures of it today for you. And we'll talk about it on the show today in our new feature, Go More Motoring Portugal. There's us chatting in the vehicle there as we're going along what turned out to be a very wet and uh, windy road. So they weren't, they weren't the most perfect conditions for showing off the car to its in its in um, all its glory. But quite a good test of its capabilities, right, on, on that uh, road mm. there. You were driving at that point. What did you think of the handling in these awkward conditions? Well, it's a four-wheel drive uh, SUV. So, you know, it's a, a solid um, car with no problems. And as uh, 
the the weather is rainy, but okay, yeah. Uh, we're both from the UK. We're used to it. It's not like we're Portuguese and we're frightened to death that it's raining. <laughs> that... Okay, so we are we are going to get occasional insight into how you view the motoring style of Portugal. And that was one such example there. Um, I think you prefer the driving style of the UK, even though you find yourself mostly on Portuguese roads these days. I would say so. Yes, um, I used to do. Uh, I used to do the equivalent of. Uh, well, I did 10,000 miles a month when I used to work for Alfa Romeo. Did you really? Uh, 10,000 miles a month, and I used to see around about one accident a month. Yeah. However, here, in the years I've been here, I've been doing limited mileage, for instance, three to 4,000 miles a, a year. <laughs> right. That's quite the change. And, and I've been seeing an accident once a week. Wow. Well, that, there you go. That's from your own experience and a bit of an opinion, as we were talking about earlier on, which I think a lot of people would find it hard to disagree with. There is a different driving style here. And I think the more Catholic a country, my my um, my theory about this, my personal theory, and it's an opinion, um, is that the more Catholic a country, the more interesting the driving style. You could say more is left to faith um, rather than... Hmm driving skill perhaps or a mixture of the two bobby's um suggestion is if if you're in lisbon if it rains take the train i think that's good advice there mm. so here we are we were going to go to the buddha garden buddha eden garden eden buddha garden I, i'm never sure which way around the words go but what a, what a brilliant venue that would have been to take a few shots two reasons yeah. we didn't go there one was because it was peeing down and the other is because we couldn't actually drive into the place to take pictures of ourselves near massive buddhas that wouldn't have been possible so we were heading in that direction we thought oh, let's go to lorigna instead and we could play a game of spot the dinosaur now no cool <laughs> jokes here please anybody um <laughs> the dinosaur is obvious in this in these images here and we're parked outside there what a fabulous place that is and what a great Little contrast, a little bit of visual poetry there. There we are looking at the dinosaur mm. age, and we're in a hybrid car, which yep. which say is is the future. I mean, it's going to go from from uh, combustion engines to hybrids to all electric. Do you think that's definitely the jet the direction of travel? Pardon the pun. Uh, I I read this morning two two articles, one by um, saying that Mercedes are stopping making electric cars in the future. And also BMW are stopping making electric cars in the future and they're going hydrogen because oh, they think wow. hydrogen hydrogen is the future. So we're still in that dilemma here as to what is the future. Um, I mean, you have to accept that the German auto industry have for 120 years been investing in the uh, petrol and diesel models so they're very reluctant to suddenly have to invest in new technology yeah i mean electric cars were around in 1890 yeah but you had to put a lot so of double a batteries so, in didn't you at that point yeah. you, you hadn't, that's, that's such a good video the uh, mercedes yeah. double a it cars. Is. it's a brilliant it is. get a chance to yeah. get from saturday night live yeah. well that's interesting yeah. so we've got ourselves in a kind of videotape moment haven't we this the, the electric yes. cars now might yeah. might be the betamax of the future where some people have yeah. got this bill and they say oh i'm never going to give up my electric car it's fantastic uh, even yeah. though those vhs guys with their hydrogen vehicles came along um us with our video disc 2000 and betamax are diehard electric vehicle users and you can hear us coming down the street that's interesting yeah. okay what about auto drive or shared cars now that's another angle altogether that question from bobby there um have you got any yeah. facts and figures on that do you think we're going to be going automated and do you think well, we'll have more carpooling because it doesn't make sense for everyone to have their own vehicle, <laughs> is it in many ways it doesn't but we are very independent aren't we we like to do what we want to do when we want to do it no question but, uh tesla with um elon musk has admitted that they're not a car company they're going to be a car sharing company so his his idea is the robo taxi yeah and certainly uh, i think it was las vegas or la i can't remember he built some tunnels where you just have teslas going through and people jump in and they get out the other end yes like in minority you know? report <laughs> which isn't the best example. similar yeah yeah <laughs> so, so you know yeah okay the, the whole the whole industry is in a 
what what will we do and it takes an entrepreneur like musk to to do something different uh all the established manufacturers kept saying oh the guy's an idiot he, he'll he won't survive and all the rest of it and now he's the best-selling electric car in the world mm. yeah okay well that and, is, and, is, and the most and the most profitable car manufacturer in the world yeah and what did you say they they um what, what, what business are they in they're in the lift sharing business did he, did he say? they're in the car sharing business robo taxis uh and um software industry they're not they oh, don't that, yeah they're, pretend they're, they're, to be a car car manufacturer they don't that's, it's a means to an end isn't it it's yeah. a means to an end yeah and that's where he's very different from the traditional uh, car manufacturers that you've mentioned there they were definitely in yeah. the business of yeah, cars. Yeah. And I would say he's in the business of data, isn't he? That's that's been the spin-off from this. Well, it's it is, and generation. one of the hidden facts behind uh, Mercedes and BMW sort of going cold feet on electric cars is they can't produce them at the sort of price that uh, and for for a profit like Elon Musk does. Yeah, and the Chinese even more so. And we'll find that out when we go to the electric car show in May, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I feel another song coming on. The Beatles could re-record Day Tripper as Data Tripper as the new album. Data Tripper. <laughs> she was a Data Tripper. Right. Okay. Let's talk more about this vehicle then. The Toyota RAV4 hybrid lent to us by Catano uh, in Caldas Terrenia. There you are um, at the back of the vehicle. Very thoughtfully, you had you had um, three very interesting tests for this vehicle, Colin. You brought your... Um, your tea and coffee caddies, those fitted in well yep. in the cup holder, didn't they? Um, and then Absolutely. you want some rear end action here where we can see <laughs> you. So you were going on holiday, which upset your dogs, didn't it? As you were leaving the house with all your suitcases. They I certainly them. did. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd, only re I'd only recently, uh, two weeks before, come back from a skiing holiday. So, And they, they this time seem to miss me more than oh. usual. Yeah. And uh, well, the, these these suitcases were empty. Although when I put on Facebook, yeah. um, we finally Colin and I are going off for a romantic weekend in Paris. <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> thought that was actually true. And I would like to say for the record, it wasn't true. It was just a joke. No, uh, based no. on the extraordinary capacity of the Rav4 hybrid, and you can yeah. see there. I mean, yeah. that 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 um, passed your test, didn't it? With with the luggage, it certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And There's so two large suitcases there that, that would get the 23 kilos that you're allowed with um, tap and yeah. two um, large uh, carry on. And that's the so, wife's luggage. That's the wife's luggage sorted out. And you and you can just put your own yeah, carry yeah. bag stuff on the back yeah. seat. Very you can good. put on the back seat. Yeah. Good. Okay. And this is the other test here. You, you and the pizza. Are we going to do this? Me with and the pizza. Car we borrow. We're going to go and buy a big pizza and see if we can get on the back seat with it. Well, we can alternate what we uh, actually carry. It doesn't have to be pizza, does it? No, but you got <laughs> you got into this vehicle, didn't you? Um, I did. If I, if I click on that, if it and I can't make it go any further. But anyway, um, you uh, uh, over six foot. You were happy with the passenger yep. experience as well, right? So you well, got in there with your big yeah. Pizza, what what I did was I left my seat uh, where it was whilst I was driving. And I'm six foot two, so I then tried to get in the, the back behind the driver's seat, and there was plenty of room for me. Yeah. So, you know, that's a good test of any car. It is. Okay, so it's passed a lot of tests so far. Um, yeah. We also found out how the um, dinosaurs became extinct, didn't we? Because they were fed pizza. Please do exactly. not feed pizzas to dinosaurs. We, yeah, we feel it kills them. <laughs> yeah. It was a kind gesture. Which backfire. And then if you give it, and if you give them Coke, they get a really bad stomach. Oh, Coca Cola they, and yeah. Coca Cola and pizza, deadly. It was the end of the dinosaurs. Hear that, human beings. Yeah. And then yeah. um, I think next day when I was taking the vehicle back, I, uh, I mean, well, aren't we lucky, Colin, to have so many wonderful locations in which to film these vehicles, even absolutely. when it's over cars. So that's me. Yeah, absolutely. Me there. Uh, on the way back, taking the vehicle back, and to say thank you mm. to this uh, lovely man, Rui Ira, um, who lent us the vehicle at Gaetano in uh, Toyota, mm. or well, Toyota Garage, uh, which is called Gaetano, and they have uh, branches in Caldas de Reña, Santarang, and Tomar, 
and uh, we can give you his phone number if you want the process made a little bit easier. You bought your car through him. That's why we know this guy, right? And it was it was it an easy absolutely. Car? Did it go smoothly? sure? Very smoothly. Uh, uh, the only problem is that the car it took nine months because uh, it's a it, it's a hand built car, and in the UK it takes over a year to get one. Mm. So nine months, I was quite pleased about. Okay, and some people say it takes nine months to get served in a Portuguese car dealership. Is that true? Right. You have to accept that uh, we're not in we're not in the United States. We're not in the not in UK. Kansas. Not in Kansas anymore. Anyway. Um, no. If you walk into a showroom in in uh, Portugal, you can look at cars, you can bang doors, you can sit in them, and nobody will approach you. They're scared, probably. <laughs> they, 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 they are shy. Right is the only word I can use for it. Yes. If you approach them and say "fale inglés," they'll go "oh, puku," and then have a proper conversation with you <laughs> in English. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they're not pushy. Uh, we can take, we can take they're, they're not pushy. They're not pushy at all, which also has the other fact that they don't like confrontation. So trying to get a, a deal out of them. I mean, obviously, I couldn't get a deal out of my car because it was a nine month waiting list. Yeah. yeah. I had to pay full up. Yeah. But they they they're not comfortable with people going in and trying to do a deal with them. They will do a deal, but they're not comfortable with it. So, you know. The, the, the habits that we've got in the UK and in the United States where the car salesman is probably treated as the lowest of the low next to probably uh, an estate agent. Traffic wardens, those sort of people. Politicians. Traffic wardens, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're just nice people here. They, they're, they're there to offer you whatever you want, you know, but uh, it, you have to make the first move. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's good to know. Uh, we were go we've only got about four minutes left, and we were going to talk about it's perfect what you, need, what you need in your car. So we'll have to do that another time. All right. That's, okay. That's a, that's a very important subject. We could take it to the Portugal Club um, timeline as yeah. well. It's very important because you get yeah. fined if you haven't got certain vehicles or documentation. Absolutely. Ephemera yeah, yeah. in yeah. your car, uh, you will get a fine yeah. for those. So we will cover those in due course. Yeah. This is the first of many i hope reviews and chats about motor and we've got some lovely feedback coming in Sue's good morning to you colin hasn't driven western north america's mountainous areas we have curves and steep climbs man um so i think you're making a bit of a generalization which i think is generally true but yes yeah what, what i'm saying is that, that they they have those roads they just don't have the right cars to drive them Oh, okay. Uh, I've seen buses go around roads that I wouldn't dare even in a small car. That's the coach drivers going into Caldas de Reina bus garage. Yeah, absolutely, is, absolutely. I mean, it's it's an yeah. optical illusion, isn't it? It's like a, a they have they are members of the magic circle. I think you have to have a HGV oh, unbelievable a PSV unbelievable license, drivers of yeah. the magic circle to get in that by handy. Yeah. Yeah. Bon dia, Malta been scrubbing out the pool, getting ready for another fantastic Bayradian summer. Look at him, stripped down to the waist with his broomstick going ahead. <laughs> um, uh, Antonio F., um, thank you, Kylie. There are, oh, okay, that's his name this week. There are, but very rare, very expensive to buy and keep some 60 Hummers in Portugal. Uh, Antonio F. read somewhere. My favourite car, says Darren, was the Honda E. Absolutely loved it. He's a good, he's a good. And uh, what's happened, asked Darren, with the new IMT app and digital driving licenses? Any clues on that, Colin? Or we can come uh, I haven't because I I basically use ACP to to do my uh, driving licenses. You, all you do is you turn up at their their office, which locally is towards Vedras. Mm -hmm. uh, you sit in front of a doctor who looks at you and goes, "Yeah, signs off." Okay, and uh, and they do the process for you. Oh, I think this, so, is, this is the convergence of digital documents. Uh, and we've got some yeah. other correspondence about this, uh, which somebody said on a different forum. Good conversation as always. Uh, this was on our dream team from last Thursday when I asked ah, the right. Portuguese professionals whether they were going to be adopting this new carry it all on your phone approach to not just your driving license, but your, your ID card ah. or another important things. Good conversation as always, said Glick Mathan, because data breaches will always be a reality. 
I would never consolidate my personal data on any app or centralized system. I get letters fairly regularly from companies and government agencies alerting me to data breaches. I also worry about online access to my bank accounts being compromised. Um, so not a fan there. And not many of the Dream Team were going to be early adopters of that either. Another bit of news before we look at a few other comments uh, was about the, um, you know how uh, Portugal um, taxes people for bringing cars in from uh, the supposedly free market of other parts of Europe. Well, um, refunds are possible. I also put that to the dream team. Um, this is not a good look for Portugal, is it, to be fining people, taxing people for bringing vehicles in from other parts of the EU. And apparently the little guy doesn't stand much of a chance with that. That's just the big importers who've tried that. It takes forever. Mm -hmm. So no light at the end of the tunnel for that particular bit of motoring news there. Lots of other comments. This is fantastic. Hybrids don't make sense to me. They have all the elements no. Both electric and fuel cars and energy re regeneration which slows the car down it's kind of pointless and suv says darren are top heavy and prone to rolling would you agree on that uh, there colin uh they used to be i mean uh, the old uh, range rovers were were very well known for toppling over on motorways uh but you know that that's a thing of the past Okay, all um, right. So that's uh, one of those things that has, I guess, has dogged the the hybrid industry. An old reputation, like Alfa yeah. Romeos are all rusty. Not true anymore. Yeah, the car Not looks exactly true, like true that in America. You can actually fit a touring bicycle in the back. No worries. How about that? Yeah. That's good to know from personal experience. Uh, the US, yeah. the Rav, the Rav, the Rav Four is available in America. So it, yes, you know, yeah. We started with a car. We started with a car that is actually available in America. Very but, good. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. it's not going to be the case. Before we welcome Heather and say goodbye to you, Colin, the US was solidly on public transport around the turn of the 20th century until the auto and fuel industries illegally began dismantling them to provide and promote um, individual cars. Interesting. Bought for 26K, and that seems about the same for other similarly spec cars. Are you talking about the that particular vehicle there? Oh, Coach Turner, uh, I, you have the hybrid that was 26K. HRV and the powertrain is great for town driving, not as economic on the motorway, but really easy to drive. Prefer my Cayman, though, of course you do. And well said, James, to an earlier comment. And finally, from Michael, uh, there's no room in any car for cup holders. That's what cafes are for, Colin. So eat your pizza. <laughs> uh, so thank you, everybody, for your, for your comments. Uh, small cars aren't safe is another very outdated statement. Yeah, cars are pretty uh, uh, safe these days aren't they relatively speaking yeah. notwithstanding yeah. um human error thank you very much uh colin so you would commend this car to the house i, I take it absolutely yes yeah, yeah, yeah. toyota yeah. rav4 yeah. hybrid yeah. um and yeah. if you want a uh, connecting with rui uh, Ica at uh, caetano in caldas just let us know It'd be our pleasure to introduce you to him he's a great fella and already since we started talking about cars, uh, other gumpers have cars that they want rid of who aren't staying in Portugal. So give me a shout. There are a few cars that people would like to uh, recycle, um, which is quite a good thing to do, isn't it? Because you know it's come from a somebody who who you either know from the gumper community uh, and it'll be new and, you, and that will spare you a lot of the processes that you uh, would otherwise have to go through. Last words uh, from you then, Colin, before we see you again next month in this uh, same capacity. Yeah, it would be nice next month for people to uh, pre-ask questions so we can make more content. Yeah, okay. Rather than uh, bumble along as we, we <laughs> as we do. We love bumbling along here, don't we? This is how we roll. <laughs> but yes, if you have any questions, um, then please just send them to us nine one three five nine zero zero three zero three. And it'll be our pleasure to uh, pick up a, a car mm. issue or two or question with you. And look forward to having a, having a bit of a chat um, from, I think, a confirmed petrol head, really. That's, you are, you are a, a, an old school. You are the dinosaur in that respect, are you not, Colin? You do love Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, so more about that when we next see you. And I hope to see you soon, probably for some rugby action. Aren't the uh, Lobos doing very well? The Portuguese team are doing fantastically, aren't they? They are playing England A on Sunday. Oh, excellent! England A in, in the U in the UK. So oh. hopefully that will be on the Portuguese uh, television, Super. if not on the UK. All right, Colin. Lots of love to you over there on the other side of the um, the, the lagoon there. And I hope to see yep. you soon. Watch a bit of rugby, have a bit of fun at the Welsh yep. Bar. Take care and bye. For bye. Now. Off he goes. There we go. Right, and let's keep that applause going. Oh, James loves bumbling with me on a Monday. And bring Heather onto the stage. Good morning to you. Fancy a bumble, Heather? 
a fancy a bumble. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs>